Who are you? Thank you. Who are you? I'm Mallory. You ought to change your name to Beautiful. You big meat eater, Mallory? I could be. You always dressed like that, or you just uh, waiting for me? Why would I be dressed like this for somebody? I don't know. Maybe something inside you told you to. You know, like fate. You believe in fate, Myler? Maybe. You weren't too happy. You wanna go for a ride and talk about it? <laughs> now, Ed, you promised your doctor no more meat. I eat what I want, so what? I mean, this fucking food here, you pray after you eat. It's just that I don't want you to clog up your arteries and just keel over here at the table. <laughs> I don't fucking cry, it turns me off. I haven't cried in 15 years and you still haven't touched me. Now, how about him? You were drunk and you thought you were in Mallory's room. That's why we have Kevin. What? You mean Mallory's my mom? <laughs> Out with the meat man. Back before dawn. Love Mallory. Ooh, that stupid bitch. You just stole your car. My car? Ooh, that meat man, cocksucker. I broke her in and he grabbed her. I'll fix his ass too. Call the cops. Come on, Leo. I'm just going to share with you guys a few things that I found interesting about this film. Um the director, Oliver Stone, apparently would play loud African tribal music um, while they were filming um, the different uh, scenes of this film. Um, apparently to keep everyone in a frantic mood, so, so that's kind of interesting. Um, now, I want to make sure that the facts are right from the book from what I got online, but I'll read the book after. What, uh, one thing that's like really interesting, and I, and I never knew this, and then as I was, it's a good thing I read this online before actually watching it again. The color green is used to indicate, so when you see the color green in Natural Born Killers, it's used to indicate the sickness of uh, Mickey's mind. And it shows up um, in several places in the film, such as the key lime pie at the beginning, um, uh, the green neon at the drugstore, which is really prominent, um, and the green room in the prison. And I've also noticed there's also, you know, green um, spots or green little sequences in various light phases. And when you, when you look in the movie and you, you want to see, like, you want to, the green really does represent when something is terribly a brewing inside of the characters, uh, Mickey and Mallory. And that's just neat. I mean, that's just neat. I like that. Oh my god, that's just so neat. Ah, oh, what else is what else is this? Okay. Um, so, how many people did uh, Mickey and Mallory kill? Well, I was listening because I wanted to know the total. Apparently, they killed 52 people. Now, does that include Wayne Gale at the end? I'm not sure. But I would really like to know if anyone out there knows exactly how many people did they kill. Um, apparently they killed 52 people. Um, hmm. Okay. Now. <laughs> Interesting fact. Um, Juliette Lewis, when she um, got in a fight with uh, Tom uh, uh, Sizemore, um, when he was visiting her in the prison cell, apparently when she um, slammed... Um, uh, Skagnetti's uh, face against the wall, she actually broke his nose in real life. So that's kind of interesting. Visually, it's really neat. Um, during Natural Born Killers, obviously, like in, in a normal scene, like you would see on the wall or in a window, like maybe different television shows or different sequences. So when Mickey and Mallory are in the hotel room um, with the hostage, you can see clips of uh, the chainsaw scene from Scarface, um, 1983, and the tongue biting scene from Midnight Express, 1978. Um, you know which both films were uh, written by Oliver Stone. 
so of course he would add his own material in it. Um, I really, really, really love the artistic use of using old footage or old um, TV clips, movie clips, or what have you, uh, black and white, especially in the 1940s, 50s, yeah, 60s and 70s, and like mixing it all together, um, you know, in a new age uh, film, which is what he did. So at the time, you know, people were not really using that. People were not like thinking outside the box in film. And it is an artsy film. It's an artsy film. Um, okay, what's really cool is I've always heard about this and I, and I don't know too much about the background story, but Natural Born Killers is actually loosely based on, you know, a real life event. And what they say is that the characters are based on Charles um, Starkweather and um, Carly uh, Fugate. Carly Fugate. Um, they were a young Nebraska couple um, who in 1958 uh, embarked on a mass murder spree across the Midwest, you know, that horrified the country. So this I don't know how many people they killed or what happened to them, but it was loosely based on a real life couple who were, you know, serial killing and mass murdering people in the public. Um, what's interesting is that because this was in the 1950s, um, you know, Oliver Stone used the sequence for Mallory, like, you know, when she's, you know, thinking back in time when she was living with her family, you know, I love Mallory and how she met Mickey. And the, the whole sequence of that is, is using it like, like in the 1950s type of feel. Um, uh, what's his name? I should know his name. <laughs> Mallory's father, which is played by, you know, the great late actor uh, Rodney Dangerfield. Um, so the whole sequence of, you know, making like the past kind of like in the 1950s is actually loosely based on the real character the real life people, you know, real life killers of the 19, of, of whatever they, whoever many people they killed in 1958. Um, so anyway, so that sequence is really cool. Um, tying back to that, I don't think I explained it very well. Um, so uh, Rodney Dangerfield, when he was playing Mallory's father, at the time uh, they say that he did not understand the script or the vision of Oliver Stone. He just played his role, but he didn't understand why it had to be portrayed in such a dark fashion. And he didn't quite understand, you know, like, why are you making it into a 1950s sitcom? You know, why, why are you shooting the sequences in, in, this, in this format, right? So only later on did, you know, Rodney, you know, really get really great uh, recognition for the role that he played as Mallory's father because, you know, we always know him as like this great comedian and he was a real freaking bastard in this movie. And, you know, he was scary. He was scary, believable, and, um, you know, he, he I, like, he just played that role really well for what it was. And when I was thinking, you know, like, of these real-life serial killers that was loosely based on, oh, well, maybe, you know, that's why they use the theme of I Love Mallory in the 1950s and all that stuff. So everything about this film is wonderfully foreshadowed, um, artistically layered on various levels. I, did, I didn't even start talking about talking about like Oliver Stone's, you know, like, you know, message and, and society's message, you know, related to this film. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Um, one thing I found really uh, funny was that the Coca-Cola commercial, you know, with the polar bears and how they're all sitting together and they're looking at the Aurora Boreala and they're drinking Coke and la 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 la. Remember those commercials? Well, that commercial plays in Natural Born Killers. And at the time, um, you know, Coca-Cola approved um, their commercial to be played in this film. But it was only afterwards that they, you know, whoever was in charge of the board of directors at the time when they saw their film, they were like, holy shit, we don't want our commercial in that. And they got upset and it was this big legal thing. And it's like, whoever the hell is in charge of marketing, like maybe you should, you know, I don't know, figure out what movie you're putting your commercials into. But literally like Coca-Cola is famous anyways. We're all, you know, it's always, people are always gonna drink Coca-Cola. It's not gonna hinder their image, but it actually made it better because we all ways will remember those polar bear commercials and the fact that they're even in this movie and, you know, 
is not going to hurt them at all. <laughs> but at the time, in the 90s, I'm sure, you know, some stuffy businessman was having, you know, quite a bad day, quite a bad day, sir. Uh, <laughs> now, I read something about there's actually a message, which I have to go back and check because I didn't notice it. When Jack um, Scagnetti goes into Mallory's cell and throughout the scene you can read two different paragraphs above the door in the cell and below Mallory's uh, on the bedside. And the one near the door reads, um, Come let's away, to prison we two, alone we sing like birds in a cage. And this is apparently a line from uh, King Lear um, by William Shakespeare. So uh, I'm going to check out the one near the door and see if it, if it writes, come, let's away to prison, we too, and all that stuff. So I, it's like so cool. It's like, I'm going to go back and, and see if I can see that and that and that. That's what I love about this movie. And it's just so powerfully um executed and I cannot I cannot talk more much more about it so so great okay so Okay, let's go! I have an arse not slacking off! 